This is News 3 Now at 6. Wisconsin's COVID-19 positivity rate continues to rise. We've now reached 27%. There are 51 new deaths confirmed today. According to DHS, the majority of the state, 68 of our 72 counties, are seeing very high levels for disease spread. The other four in northwestern Wisconsin are seeing high levels. The seven-day average of new cases per day is at an alarming 3,900. Hospitals in Rock County are working hard just to keep things stable. They have been, despite Despite record case counts. Still, that's not stopping some Rock County schools from welcoming kids into classrooms. Adam Duxter live in Janesville having spoken with a district that's sticking to its plan. Adam? Well, it's been of a bit of a dramatic shift headed into this month. Rock County had never seen more than 900 coronavirus cases in a single month. And with three days left in October is on pace to nearly triple that number. But in Edgerton, administrators say in-person learning still might be the safest option. So can you guys open up your binders and find the anchor chart? It's a year unlike any of the other 15 plus Andrea Johnson has spent in front of the classroom. We're flying an airplane as we build it, right? They don't teach you about this in, in college. Um, you don't really prep for something like this. Johnson's third grade students at Community Elementary School in Edgerton. What's the tag, Margaret? Spend all day, including lunch, in this room, making sure each raise hand. Where are they? is coming from a student with a covered face. But we've been very honest and open about why we're wearing a mask and why we need to social distance and, and why we're in our classrooms all day long. And the district says it's working. The cohort style elementary school what do you think? paired with alternating days of in-person learning at the high school level has seen only two staff and three students test positive for COVID since the start of the school year. What we're seeing in the community isn't necessarily reflective of what we're seeing in the schools. But outside the schools, Rock County has more than 1,800 active coronavirus cases, a total that's tripled this month and could pose a serious threat in months to come. You have Thanksgiving and you have Christmas and Thanksgiving and Christmas are what? Incredibly social family or holidays. And while hospitals like SSM in Janesville continue to see a rise in new patients. It's a question, right? Those in Edgerton say what they're doing might actually be the safest choice. We have to remember that it's as equally scary to families who send their children here as well. And for some families, that's their only choice. District Administrator Dennis Polly says the district truly is taking things day by day with no concrete plans as to what might happen during the holiday season. But tonight, health officials in Rock County are truly urging people to take this virus seriously and to practice as much caution in their daily lives as they can. All right, Adam, thank you. Doctors in Wisconsin are seeing a surge in hospitalizations and deaths. Our Gabriella Becerra is outside UW Hospital and explains why doctors don't think deaths will slow down anytime soon. Gabby? UW Health Dr. Nasia Safdar said COVID-19 can quickly spread from person to person, but you don't always see the impacts immediately. What happens is younger people get COVID-19 and they generally recover, but at some point they pass it on to older adults and those who are at risk. It takes a couple weeks, but the state slowly sees hospitalizations go up as those individuals have trouble fighting the virus off and those hospitalizations can turn into deaths. Dr. Safdar says right now, Wisconsin is in the high hospitalizations and deaths phase. I think what other states have seen is that you can have a very steep upward trajectory for many, many weeks before you start to see it going down. And even then, it doesn't really go down by itself. You know, some mitigation has to happen. That mitigation is following public health guidelines of wearing a mask and social distancing. Dr. Safdar says it's not just going to take a couple people to turn this around. It's going to take the entire population. And if that doesn't happen, then Wisconsin might see this wave start all over again. Wisconsin's Saturday game against Nebraska is canceled and all team activities are paused for a week due to positive COVID-19 tests. Sports Director Zach Hanley spoke with Athletic Director Barry Alvarez today. Yeah, with 12 positive tests in a five-day span, Wisconsin AD Barry Alvarez and Chancellor Rebecca Blank decided to push the pause button on the football team and cancel their trip to Nebraska as well as team activities for the next seven days. This is coming after Wisconsin's 45-7 win over Illinois, where they looked very good. So as a former coach it was tough it was a tough decision to pull the plug but Alvarez knows it had to be done if they want to play the rest of the season 
is very disappointing and frustrating. And I think the first thing, your natural tendency is, let's get back on the field and get right back at it. But uh, that's where, you know, you have to put priorities in order and make sure that our number one concern is health and safety of our athletes. The Badgers can hit the field next on Wednesday, which is three days before the Purdue game, so it doesn't really give them a lot of time to get ready for it. But the focus right now, obviously, is slowing that curve and player safety. All right, Zach, thank you. Turning to weather now, not a bad day, especially with some of that sunshine we saw. Let's check your first worn forecast with meteorologist Dana Fulton. We finally got a bit of sun and temperatures in the 50s, so a nice swing in a different direction this afternoon, a little more mild. Now we're seeing a little more cloud coverage build back in. Here's a live look look with our WIC TV sky cam a really pleasant sunset and with everything going on right now sometimes it's nice to just take a pause and look at that sunset we're sitting close to 50 degrees currently with our skies becoming mostly cloudy breeze coming in from the southwest so we're at about 50 in Madison but 46 in Janesville Janesville and in Mineral Point our temperature trend tonight won't drop too chilly just with the cloudy sky overhead overnight lows in the mid to low 30s and then tomorrow mostly cloudy and cooler will drop back to the low 40s stay below average for the rest of the week, but we will get the sunshine back in time for Halloween this weekend. Your full 10 day in just a few minutes. Dana, thank you. The newly formed Speaker's Task Force on Racial Disparities met for the first time today. Co-chair Representative Sheila Stubbs of Madison started the discussion with a list of statistics. Black families in Wisconsin are impoverished at a rate of 28.7% compared to the 10.3% average. The median black income in the state, 58% of white income. The three-year infant mortality rate for black children, 14.2%, more than twice that of white children. And while black people make up only 6% of the state population, they make up 38% of the prison population. Representative Stubbs said these conditions are unacceptable, staggering, and must be changed. It is more clear that we need to have action immediately. In fact, it is an urgency. In fact, it is a crisis. And I'm asking you today to stand with me because this is a call to action. We will start the task force by tackling the use of force issues that have been seen throughout the state of Wisconsin and throughout our nation. Along with four representatives, 28 community members are also part of the task force. They joined the meeting virtually. A website is being created now so the public can stay involved. Wisconsin Eye also live streams the meetings on their website. According to the latest Marquette Law School poll released today, Joe Biden with a slight lead over the president among likely voters in Wisconsin. The results show 48% favor Biden compared to 43% of likely voters supporting the president. The poll sample included 806 registered voters in Wisconsin. Margin of error, 4.3 percentage points. Less than a week away from Election Day, presidential campaign surrogates from both sides are holding events in Wisconsin. Under this president's leadership, Wisconsin added more than 56,000 new jobs in the first three years of the Trump administration. And this includes 15,000 new manufacturing jobs. I mean, think how many lives were changed because of that. Okay. Second Lady Karen Penn spoke at a rally in Waterloo. President Trump plans to campaign in Green Bay on Friday. It'll be his third Wisconsin stop in a week. Democratic nominee Joe Biden is also scheduled to campaign in Wisconsin on Friday, but the location has not been announced yet. Today on Madison's South Side, a group of Biden supporters held a car parade. This was in front of the Madison Library on South Park Street. Senator Tammy Baldwin was among the speakers there. She spoke about the importance of voting and her desire to get Trump out of office. Wisconsin communities are facing multiple crises at this very moment, including a painful economic recession and a global health pandemic. But we have another crisis, a president who ignores all of it and has no plan. Baldwin also encouraged people to get out and vote early if possible or make sure your ballot is delivered directly to your clerk on or before Election Day. Just how easily does misinformation spread? Well, we're about to show you. News 3 Investigates reporter Naomi Coles teamed up with Wisconsin Watch to bring us a timeline of how far and fast misinformation travels in Wisconsin leading up to the election. Naomi? Many of you have already seen a photo of mailboxes piled in a yard in Wisconsin. False posts online called it voter suppression. Fact checkers said it was not. But by the time it was corrected, a lot of the damage was already done. Originally retweeted and shared by tens of thousands, 
fact-checked articles came nowhere near matching that spread. Frequently, it's too late to make a difference. It's not just followers of one political party or one side of the spectrum that believe these lies. All of us have probably fallen to some of these pieces of misinformation. Tonight at 10, we'll dive into just how far that goes. I'm showing you the original spread of that false post and compared it to the spread of the follow-up correct information. Plus, I'll tell you why it matters. All right, Naomi, thank you. And coming up next at 6, how Madison High Schools are supporting a homeless resource center and a Halloween tradition still happening this year. We'll share how you can participate in the NICU Halloween costume contest that's just ahead. Let's turn off the noise and look at the facts about Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's government-run health care plan. Their plan could lead to hospitals being closed, put Medicare coverage at risk, and give benefits to illegal immigrants. Their plan is just too dangerous for seniors like us. No amount of noise will change that. Learn more at SeniorsBeware.com. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. We aren't radical, so why would we want one representing us in Madison? Chris Marion is an extreme partisan liberal who's just fine with calling political opponents Nazis, dictators, and enemies. And Chris Marion wants to take more of your paycheck, too. Marion supports eliminating levy limits, causing property taxes to skyrocket, crushing families as they try to recover. And Marion backs the radical Green New Deal that will cost trillions, destroy jobs, and increase taxes. Chris Marion, just too radical. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we live where you live, so we know getting ready for winter is essential. We're your cold weather experts with everything you need to gear up for the cold, snowy weather ahead. Like 25% off zero exposure outerwear for the family. Select winter boots for the family or $10 off. And get your vehicle ready for winter with new tires. Buy three, get one free. Plus, buy online and pick up your items in our convenient drive through You don't even need to get out of your car. Find value at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. If you elect me, your taxes are going to be raised, not cut. What does that mean for you? Household incomes down $6,500 a year. Higher gas prices at the pump and utility bills at home. And here's how it works. I'm going to raise taxes. Small businesses pay more. Five million jobs lost. You're going to get a tax raise. An economy in ruins. That's what Joe Biden's tax increase means for you. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Welcome back. Of course, Halloween will just not be the same this year. So if you're in need of a bit of a pick-me-up, check out Unity Point Health Meritor's annual Halloween costume contest for babies in the NICU. These little bundles of joy all dressed up like R2-D2 and Yoda from Star Wars. <laughs> We've got a pirate there, a flower, and a ladybug as well. And even some twins in the NICU dressed as skeletons or a <laughs> milk and cookies set as well. All families <laughs> who participate will get a gift and the photo with the most likes will receive a little something extra and you can cast your vote on the Unity Point Health Meritor Facebook page. Some Madison students are doing something good. Students in the Superhero Club at Memorial High School are holding a coat drive. For people in need at the Beacon Homeless Resource Center, this drive runs until Friday. You can drop off coats at Memorial High School, Church of Christ, and Point of Grace Church between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Helping others out, just like a superhero would, is a big part of this club. So this volunteer work, it really does mean a lot since it is one of the main things that we're able to do at this age. It means a lot to me because a lot of people need help during this time and not a lot of people are as fortunate as us. And so it, it means a lot to me to be helping out people who need help. Best Cleaners on Raymond Road is covering all cleaning costs. We'll have all this information online at channel3000.com. We'll be right back. Register and vote at an early voting site until October 30th. If you're registered, the last day to vote early is November 1st. Bring a photo ID and proof of residency. IWillVote.com slash WI for more information. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. During the Steinhoffel's Employee Family Price Sale, everyone is invited. Even me? Yep, even you. Et moi? Uh, we. Oh, moi. 
have to talk about? Steinhoffel's Employee Family Price Sale. Save 40% store-wide on the largest selection of in-stock furniture at the guaranteed lowest price. Not even one lesson. He's our independent voice who answers to no one but us, Todd Novak. Todd Novak is working across the aisle passing the bipartisan COVID-19 relief bill, helping hospitals and communities get the resources needed to fight the coronavirus. Todd Novak is helping families, small businesses, and farmers as we work to rebuild the economy safely. And Todd Novak led the bipartisan effort to make sure our water is clean and safe for future generations. Our voice, Todd Novak for State Assembly. The Social Security Administration just released a report saying that if a plan like the one Trump is proposing goes into effect, the Social Security Trust Fund would be, and I quote, permanently depleted by the middle of calendar year 2023. Put it plainly, Trump's plan would wipe out Social Security. If I'm your president, we're going to protect Social Security and Medicare. You have my word. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Update the lighting in your home with help from Menards. Find your style with Patriot Lighting Ceiling Fans. We carry a great selection of ceiling fans, so you're sure to find a look that's right for you. Now's the time to save with 11% off all Patriot Lighting Ceiling Fans. We also carry a great selection of LED bulbs in stock. Pick up this four-pack of LED bulbs for $4.98 after 11% rebate. Save big money at Register and vote at an early voting site until October 30th. If you're registered, the last day to vote early is November 1st. Bring a photo ID and proof of residency. IWillVote.com slash WI for more information. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Hurricane Zeta making landfall earlier this evening along the coast of Louisiana. A lot of rain and wind, storm surge along with us in a path that has been uh, already impacted by several tropical storms this season. It's going to continue to move northeast and travel through Alabama, Mississippi, over Atlanta and the Carolinas, bringing a lot of rain all the way up the southeast. That's why we do have tropical storm warnings along the coast, but also extending up into the Carolinas. For us, though, sunshine and really no rain chances as we look ahead through the weekend and into next week. Tomorrow, a little bit of cloud coverage though. So we lose the sun for one day. The sun's going to disappear a bit. Temperatures will draw back. We'll be a little chilly outside for Thursday and Friday, but we're back into the 50s again by Halloween. A pretty pleasant forecast for Saturday in the low 50s with partly sunny skies. And looking ahead to next week, the first week of November, quite likely that we're going to continue to see temperatures above average. That trend carries us into the start of the month. Overall, our Doppler track is pretty quiet. Rain Rain stays further south. We have a breeze coming in from the southwest and we're watching a cold front well to the north that's going to pass through, not bringing any rain along with it, but it is going to bring that cloud coverage for tomorrow. We'll have mostly cloudy skies through the afternoon behind it. Our breeze coming in from the northwest, so a little cooler outside for Thursday and for Friday. But again, we don't have any rain chances. It will stay dry through the week. Overnight, our uh, increasing cloud coverage stops our temperatures from dropping too much. Overnight lows will be in the mid to low 30s. We'll stay mostly cloudy through the day tomorrow with high temperatures landing in the low 40s, so a bit cooler outside. For Friday, we're also expecting those cooler temperatures. Afternoon highs will be in the mid to low 40s. Overall, tomorrow, mostly cloudy and cooler. We have to drop back just a little bit, about 43 in Madison. And then the sunshine will return for Friday. Friday will be mostly sunny with highs in the mid to low 40s. Part Partly sunny for Saturday and Sunday. Halloween Saturday, we'll see highs in the middle or mid to low 50s. But once the sun does set, those temps will drop back into the 40s. So it'll be a little chilly outside in the evening. We'll stay chilly for Sunday, but then we start a warming trend that carries us through the week, including Election Day on Tuesday. We'll see highs in the 50s with sunshine continuing on. No rain in that forecast at all. Overnight lows also steadily warming up as we head into next week. So we aren't expecting those chilly mornings to circle back around for the start of November. That's a quick look at your forecast. And coming up in sports, it's round two between the Packers and the Vikings. Why Matt LaFleur expects the Minnesota defense to look a lot better on Sunday. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. 
Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. If you're hearing a grinding or squealing when coming to a stop, it's time to have your brakes checked. Meineke's 23-point inspection will identify the problem and get them in working order. Stop in or make an appointment online today. Meineke, doing car care right. There is only one America. No Democratic rivers. No Republican mountains. Just this great land and all that's possible on it with a fresh start. Cures we can find. Futures we can shape. Work to reward. Dignity to protect. There is so much we can do if we choose to take on problems and not each other and choose a president who brings out our best. Joe Biden doesn't need everyone in this country to always agree. Just to agree, we all love this country. And go from there. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Because talk is cheap. Let's look at what Joe Biden's done. During the last economic crisis, President Obama trusted Joe to lead the recovery and bring us back. Now he has the plan to do it again, to revive and reinvest in jobs and real help for middle-class families. He'll listen to experts to get control of the virus so we can build back even better. Joe Biden, a president to get it done. FFPAC is responsible for the content of this ad. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Four years ago, Donald Trump asked Black America a simple question. What do you have to lose? Since then, we've seen a rise in racial violence and white supremacy, an increase in poverty while giving tax cuts to the rich. 200,000 dead from COVID. One in five are Black. We've lost our jobs, our businesses, our dignity, and even our lives. And he dares to ask, What the hell do you have to lose? Damn near everything. Hey everybody, Thursday is the deadline to request an absentee ballot before the election. But if you're planning on voting in person at the polls, there are some things elections officials want you to keep in mind to help keep everyone safe and healthy. We'll tell you what they are tomorrow. All right, we do have some breaking news. The Wisconsin Supreme Court will hear oral arguments. This is in a lawsuit challenging the emergency powers of Governor Tony Evers to issue a statewide mask mandate. We'll have the latest updates at channel3000.com. A pair of campaign ads feel like a harmless infomercial, but they feature plenty of mistruths about Joe Biden's health care plans. Amy Reid has this News 3 Now reality check. Attention fellow seniors. These two ads. And let's turn off the noise. Star the same person and make many of the same false claims about Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's health care plans. Their plan could lead to hospitals being closed. This is false. The article they cite for this talks about the impact of Medicare for all, which is not Joe Biden's plan. It argues since Medicare negotiates its prices, hospitals are reimbursed less with that type of insurance than with private insurance. Biden supports a public option that would function like Medicare in that it would negotiate prices for its services. But Biden consistently says he supports people staying on their private insurance if they want. Private insurance eliminated. That makes this one mostly false. The impact of a public option is it would force private insurance companies to compete, but not necessarily go away. We don't know how private insurance companies would respond. Trump's source for his claim talks about single payer health care systems, which a public option is not. Put Medicare coverage at risk. This is false and misleading. His source is partisan. It says on their site they are there to help Donald Trump. But the claim itself is debunked by the Kaiser Family Foundation. Foundation, which analyzed Biden's plan and all other Democrats' plans during the primary and found all of the public option proposals would retain the current Medicare program. And give benefits to illegal immigrants. This is misleading. Biden raised his hand during a primary debate where the moderator asked about covering undocumented immigrants, but a spokesperson for the campaign said he supports allowing undocumented immigrants to buy unsubsidized plans on the marketplace. Under President Trump, Medicare premiums in Wisconsin have gone down 21%. This is misleading. Trump is likely talking about Medicare Advantage plans. 
Those premiums have gone down since he took office and seven out of the last 10 years. However, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation, most Americans and most Wisconsinites on Medicare aren't on this type. Part B premiums have gone up every year as they do most years. For this News 3 Now Reality Check, I'm Amy Reed. When you say, like, how do you feel, right? There's a health feel, and then there's a disappointment feel, right? And, but you were all probably real similar. Six Badgers, Paul Christ, and five other staff members on the Wisconsin football team have tested positive for COVID-19 in a span of five days. That number caused UW to cancel their road trip to Lincoln and begin isolating themselves from one another. Chris is out for 10 days, while the six players are out for 21. It's hard to even think about getting ready for Purdue, and they're not. Priority number one, find out how the spread happened and fix it. What matters most is you know, the health and safety of our our players. And then um, then I think you're also trying to do what, provide them what they want most and, and what we want, and that's the opportunity to play. And, and that's where you're trying to have that balance. And so I think you're going to try to look at uh, everything. Remember way back in week one when the Packers went into Minnesota and handed the Vikings? Well, that was fun, right? This Sunday, round two in Lambeau. In the first meeting, the Packers offense lit it up. They scored 41 points. Remember, the defense earned a safety. Gained over 500 yards, and Aaron Rodgers threw for 364 yards and four scores. But according to Matt LaFleur, the Vikings defense will be better this time around. You can tell that they're getting more comfortable playing with one another. Uh, although the, the scheme's the same, and, he, and Coach Zimmer's been doing that scheme for a really long time. The scheme is really, really sound. You know, it's going to be a challenge. That They play extremely hard. I don't care what necessarily the numbers say. Well, the Packers had some familiar faces return to practice. Alan Lazard and Christian Kirksey hit the field for the first time since being put on IR back on October 3rd. LaFleur didn't release a timetable on when the two will be back on the active roster, but being, being back at practice is a good start. The Wisconsin men haven't released their schedule yet, but the Marquette men have, and go ahead and circle December 4th on your calendar because that's when the I-94 rivalry is renewed. The 2020 edition will be played in Milwaukee. The Badgers won last year's meeting at the Kohl Center by 15, but the two have split the last 10, each winning five, and I know someone mm -hmm. was looking forward to that. Oh, yes, most definitely. Too but. bad we can't go see them, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, in person. Don't, don't bring that up. Uh, <laughs> All right, thank you, Zach. And here's a final check with Dana. A little cooler for Thursday and Friday, but sunny skies returning by Halloween for the weekend, and then we're going to be milder for the first week of November. All right, Dana, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.